visitors here this morning. It's good to see y'all. It's good to see all the pews almost filled up. Need to fill them up more. Uh, the scripture this morning is praying always without all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there and too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come again, Lord, to give you the blessing and praise that you deserve. And Father, we thank you for the blessing that we've received this week. And Lord, we ones we don't even know about, Lord, we give you praise for that. We pray for the visitors that's here today. We ask you to just touch our hearts. And Lord, just one here that's lost don't know you as a personal Savior. Lord, we pray today be the day of their salvation. 
Lord, this might be the last time they get the opportunity that they'll have to receive you. But Lord, we ask you to just convict their hearts. Let them take a baby step for you and you'll take the rest of the altar. Lord, we thank you for the, the eternal broadcast, Lord. We pray for the ones on it. We ask you to just touch them. We pray for the Facebook that's watching. We ask you to touch them. And Lord, we pray for the hands full of glory. We ask you to touch them, bless them as they go out and serve the message with sign language. And Lord, we know how it touches our heart as we see it. We pray for the choir. We ask you to touch them. And Lord, we ask you to pray for this special singing today. But Lord, we ask you for special blessing for Brother Yancey, Lord, to see sent before us and preaches the word to us, the truth that we need to hear. Now, Lord, we pray for the sick and the ones that on the bed of affliction. We pray for J.B. Baltridge, Irene Bell, Dakota and Brandon, Brenda Bryant, Earl and Brad, Barbara Clarkson, Jamie Cole, Jean Connor, Kathy Crane, Surgery March the 20th, Jack and Gail Dale, Scott and Scotty Team, Kelsey Braun, Linda Gale Dorm, Joe and Joyce Earp, Roy and Cletus Evans, Mamie Graham, Manny Graham, Marion and Emma Hamlet, Faith Ann Holly, Jerry Highs, Kidney and Tumor and Back, Audrey Hoskins, Wayne and Pam Hudson, <coughs> Marion Johnson, Sissy Johnson, Cancer, Eston Lewis, Knee Surgery, Shelby Martin, Angeline Merriman, John and Linda Mitchell, Angela Moore, Shoulder, Toby Moore, J.T. Moorefield, Linda Moorefield, Tess This Week, Keith Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Angela Oaks, Donald Owen, Christy Payne, Unspoken Request, Sherry Pompadinsky, Lee Rain, Shingles, Danny Ray, Therapy, Robert and Vicki Reed, James Richardson, Hope Riddle Rehab, Cindy Rutherford, Gary Salmon, Beth Shields, Bill and Judy Snow, Eileen Tickle, Ken and Angie Bickerman, Evelyn Wallington, Cancer, Nathan Wells, Cancer, Connie Wells, Kelly Wood, Harold, St uh, Harold Yancey, Sheila Barker, Knee Replacement Tuesday, Mylan Family, E.T. Connor, Tess Monday, the McCarter Family, Lost of a Loved One, Robin Shields, Sick at Home, Angela Bickerman, Sick at Home. Lord, we ask you to touch each and every one in a very special way. Lord, we believe with our heart this prayer be answered. We know that you can heal them. We know that you're touching them. Just breathe on them, Lord, to give them the comfort that they need. If they're in pain, Lord, we ask you to take that pain away. And Father, we just pray for this church. Pray for each and every home that's here. Pray for Sunday school classes. And Lord, we just give you the praise and glory to all the rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Just common flesh and bone But I'll prove someday Just what I say I'm of a special kind When he was on the cross I was on is mine. The look of love was on his face. The thorns were on his head. 
The blood was sore, that scarlet road stained a crimson red. Though his eyes were on that crowd that day, he looked ahead. Isn't it wonderful to know that somebody loves you? Amen. He loves you. More than you'll ever know. Yeah. Okay, here we go for the old people. Wednesday, March the 13th, Gary Solomon. <laughs> no, she had a little trouble getting up there. <laughs> we praying for you. Thursday, March 14th, Kara Eastwood. <laughs> Tell her we said happy birthday. Friday, March 15th, Lee Rains. <laughs> Let him know we're praying for him. I miss anybody. I'm pretty good. My, if you got any anniversary, stand up to you. That's all right. Just sit down. She's been putting up with me for 57 years. <clears throat> she needs some kind of medal for that. <laughs> We've been through some hard times and some wonderful times, thanks to the Lord. Amen. All right. Tracks and missionaries. You got plenty of tracks out there. Go grab your handful, pass them out. Let the Lord know you love Him, trying to increase His kingdom. You know what I always say hell is hot. He's trying to give me some hand signals. Hey, you understand that? <laughs> Hell is hot. Lord's coming, ready or not. All right, we're going to sing happy birthday to wonderful Gary. Happy birthday to you. to say it was one born last week. What was her name? 
Who? Kalana. Give her a hand. <laughs> Got the proud grandpa and great grandpa here and great grandma. You ought to see that baby. I hope when I grow up, I'll look like that. <laughs> okay, don't, well, the missionaries for this week, David and Mary, wise, remember all your missionaries and their families. Now's a bad time for them. They're having problems everywhere. So, oh, and there's Jack. Glad to have you back, Jack. <laughs> Black Jack. <laughs> I didn't say Black Jack. I said Black Jack. <laughs> okay, for Sunday school. Now, let me tell you, if you're not coming to Sunday school, you're missing a blessing. I mean, buddy, this man can teach. He's taught me some, a couple of things. I'm so hard here. That's about all he can do. All right, 100% classes with middle school. Wow. Good job, middle school and nursery. Give them a hand. <laughs> Business was middle school and ladies. Give them a hand. <laughs> Had six visitors. Thank you, visitors. Come back to see us. We're a good bunch of people. Total 75. It ain't getting there. We got to get them up. I know y'all really want to hear me sing, right? Oh, well. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Count that high. One, two. Page number two. Glory to his name. Let's sing the first, second, and fourth verse of glory to his name. to your heart, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This time we're going to go over our uh, bulletin. So if you got those, go ahead and get those out. We've got a few announcements and upcoming events we have here at the church. Uh, before you open them up, let's see that. Let's not remember our vision for 2024. Lord, please open the door in 2024. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8a says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. Amen. Let's go ahead and open it up. We see that we'll be having our prayer meeting on Blair, in our Blair's church land. Uh, we will be out there on March 23rd at 2 p.m., so everybody please come on back for that. Brother Eric Dodder will be our special speaker for that day, so please make plans to be there March 23rd at 2 p.m. for a blessing. 
Also, we will have our ladies praise and paint. That will be Friday, March 22nd at 6.30. Uh, bring finger foods. It will be $30 per person, and all materials are included. And if you'd like to sign up, please see Shannon Moorfield. She'll sign you up. Uh, Salt and Light Ministries will be having a split event. It will be happening uh, Saturday, March 16th. It will be at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, please meet at Timberlake at 945, and we'll... Uh, Go where the uh, girls will be going, and the boys will be going where they're going to be going. And the girls will be going to a baking competition, and the boys will be playing basketball. So please invite all your friends, uh, family, strangers, neighbors, enemies. Bring, uh, invite them all. We're going to have a good time. Amen? Amen? I'm going to have a good time. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to have a prayer conference up on Sunday, May the 5th, with Bruce Goldsmith. He'll be with us in the uh, Sunday school hour, 945, 11 o'clock morning worship hour, and 6 o'clock p.m. or a Sunday night worship hour as well. Uh, coming right around the corner, I can't believe it's going to be Easter. It's gonna be, Easter is going to be upon us. Uh, March 30th, we'll be having a Kingdom Kids at Easter extravaganza. That will be 12 to 2 p.m. And we're still in need of some candy. We have a uh, box in the uh, vestibule back there. And if you'd like to give, we are in need of donations for candy. So these kids are going to find a lot of eggs. They want to have candy inside of them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's be sure to give, uh, give where you can. Amen. Also, we'll be blessed uh, by our Easter cantata on March 31st at Sunday, 11 a.m. Uh, the Easter miracle. I cannot wait for that. Amen. Uh, on Tuesday, there'll be Bible study. They're still in the book of uh, 1 Peter. And it'll be this Tuesday at 1 p.m. If you're not doing anything, come out for a blessing. And you can still receive one of our Taste of Timberlake cookbooks. All you have to do is see uh, uh, Shannon Moorfield uh, to get a copy today. And also, some uh, two other things. Uh, March 27th at 7 p.m., we'll be having a communion service here at Wednesday. And April 1st at 6.30, we'll be having a men's prayer meeting back here. And uh, I, think, I believe uh, Brother Manny Graham will be the special speaker for that. So uh, you can look at the bulletin and say we got a lot of prayer opportunities, right? That's because we believe prayer works around here. Amen? Amen. I've seen what God can do, and we need to continue to stay faithful to him. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. And we'll have our ushers come up today, and we're going to receive our Sunday morning offering. If you have your uh, white envelopes in front of you guys, as for our tithes and offerings, tithes are 10%. Uh, that's what God's called us to do. And offering is what, if you've been good to you, give, give a little bit more. Amen. And if you don't have cash to check in house, Brother Ken Griffin's in the back right there. If you'd like to give those uh, that way as well. And also our brown envelopes are in front of us as well. That's for our building fund. Uh, to get out there, it's going to take time, talent, and treasure. Amen. So let's be sure to continue to give weekly and so that we can see all the great things the Lord's going to do, do for us out there. And if you're listening by way of internal broadcasting and Facebook Live, uh, we ask that if you'd like to give as well, there's one of two ways you can give us too. You can go to www.strengththeday.com, click on our secure link at the top, or you can get by way of mail. You can send it to P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. And at this time, I'm going to have Jackson Snow come up and bless our offering today. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you so much for allowing all of us to be here, Lord. I thank you so much for the Sunday school hour, Lord. I pray that you just um, step on our toes for the 11 o'clock hour, Lord. And I pray that you just bless our hearts and bless this offering to further your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving back to the Lord this morning. Let's give him instrumentalists a hand this morning as well. 
Amen. I have one more announcement. Uh, I have a card to read for us this morning. The family of Leon Wiles gratefully acknowledges your kind and expression of symphony. symphony. Thank you so much for the prayers, the phone calls, and the encouragement during Leon's illness. You will never know how much it meant to our family. Love in Christ, Connie Wiles and family. Let's remember to keep them in, in uh, our prayers for the next couple of weeks and months. Amen. All right. This time, if you have your Bibles, please turn them to the uh, book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 6, as Miss Patty comes to sing for us. I'd like to thank the Lord for saving me today. And this is the first time I've sung with me playing the piano in a very long time. But I'm just shaking like a leaf. I don't know if uh, uh, Mr. Snow, <laughs> the dentist, I can't think of his name. Uh, <laughs> It's like when I was in the dentist chair and they was going to tell me this, they're going to pull my wisdom teeth. Well, they had to get JB to come in and hold my legs down. I was so nervous. <laughs> but we got the wisdom teeth out, but he had to hold my leg down. <laughs> so I might have to get him up here to hold my leg down. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Y'all pray for me, okay? The blood that stained the old rugged cross. people said. Amen. I thank the Lord Brother Baldur is still sitting. That's all I'll say on that subject. And I have learned so much this morning. I don't know if my mind can handle it all or not. I'm glad to know Jackson thinks all I'm good for is stepping on people's toes. I'm glad I got informed of that this morning. That's 
That's very helpful. I hope I get his big toe this morning. Amen. That'll, that'll fix him. It's good to see Nancy Newton back with us today. She's been taking chemo, and Brother Jack's been taking his treatments. Good to see him here today. And Belinda Moorefield, glad to see her back today. She's been feeling under the weather. And uh, Shira Podobinski, it's good to see you this morning. Appreciate you being here. See, why is that so important? I pray for all these people to come to church this morning. Here they are. Say amen. That's the answer to prayer. Take your Bibles and turn to Haggai chapter number 2. We're quickly winding down the book of Haggai, two chapters. You say, where in the world is that? Go to Matthew, go back four books, and you'll find it. Haggai chapter number 2 and verse 6. We talked about the foolish comparison in verses 1 through 3 of chapter 2. They were foolishly comparing the Solomon's temple to the new temple they were building after the captivity. Then in verses 4 and 5, the faithful call that God was depending on them to do this job. And now we're going to talk about the future of his coming. We started talking about it last Sunday night. We're going to finish it up today. Verses 6 through 9, we talked about verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Verse 7, and I will shake all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with what? Glory, Glory, saith the Lord of hosts. We have a picture here of Solomon's temple. It was an ornate temple. Gold, precious stones. It was beautiful. Of course, when Nebuchadnezzar came, they destroyed the temple, stole all the gold and silver. That's why the foolish comparison came in because the next temple, the next picture is the temple that they built, Zerubbabel's temple. And you could tell it was not as ornate. It was not as beautiful. It was plain Jane. And God told them it's not how ornate the building is. It's, it's the presence of the Lord in that building. That's what makes the house of God. Then the third temple was Herod's temple, which was torn down by Titus, which was even uh, more ornate or or close to what Solomon's temple was, much bigger, much uh, more land capacity. But there's been no temple from this day, from that day to this day. There's an Islamic mosque now where the temple used to sit in Jerusalem. But then when Jesus comes, at his second coming, his future coming, There will be a tribulational temple. They've already got all the materials ready. They've already got it ready to go. They've cloned the uh, red heifer. They've got the red the ashes of the red heifer ready. Everything's ready. All they got to do is find the uh, the ark of the covenant, and I believe they know where that's at, and uh, they know where that's located. So then there'll be that tribulational temple built. Then when Christ comes, there'll be a millennial temple. And really, God looks at them all as the same temple because all they were was to house his glory. The church today ought to be housing the glory of Almighty God. He says the day is coming when his house will finally be filled with the full glory of the presence of the Lord. And it will never depart again. He'll bring the Shekinah glory of God with him when he returns in all his power and all his glory. He retook that Shekinah glory when he got to heaven after his ascension. And now he possesses that and when he comes, he will come in all his power and his glory. He's trying to make a point here to Israel that even though now they can't see his full glory, His glory can come. His glory can be seen. And I want to share with you several thoughts this morning. First of all, the brightness of his position. 
the brightness of his position in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the what? The word of his power. You ought to underline that in your Bible and not forget that. When he had, had by himself purged our sins on the cross, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He's in heaven now. He's got his work done. The cross has been completed. The empty, the tomb is now empty. In heaven, his position on the throne is evident and viewed in heaven. His glow lights up the throne room of that abode of God. His ambience can be clearly seen in heaven each and every day. Though it cannot be seen here, it can be seen in heaven. Here and there, the only thing that is the same, here on earth and in heaven, is what I told you to underline in your Bible. The word of his power. Do you want to know what brings the glory of God to the house of God? It's the word of God. It's the truth of the Bible. God the Father gave his word of promise to bring about the plan of salvation, and he kept his every promise. He kept his every word. God the Son became word in the flesh and fulfilled that through the shedding of his blood, the giving of his life, his rising from the grave to complete the plan of salvation so you and I could be saved. I don't know about you, but I'm tickled I'm saved. I'm thankful I'm saved. I'm thoughtful of that salvation. And I want to share it with everybody that comes in contact with me. You see, he ascended to heaven. He took his rightful place on the right hand of the throne, which is the seat of power. We know the Bible says all judgment is going to be given to the Son. The Son's going to be the judge on the throne. Now, the Holy Spirit of God carries on this plan of salvation, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ, drawing men to him through the convicting power of the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yet in this world we live in, we have to, by faith, focus on who he is and his position he holds and looking forward to that day when we see the brightness of his coming. Oh, what a day that's going to be. We need to build our faith, and to do that we have to be constantly reminded of the position the Word of God ought to hold in our hearts and in our minds and in our faith. And to see what he does when he saves a man or a woman, that's miracle power. Last Sunday morning, we saw two miracles. Two young people got saved. I call that a miracle. Say amen. Oh, what a glorious thing to see two precious young people give their heart, soul, and life to Jesus Christ for all of eternity. Folks, some churches don't see two people saved ever. Thank God we saw it in one service here Sunday. And folks, that's the miracle we should be looking for. When he saw, uh, so when he shows us the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's when we see his glory in this church, is when people get saved. And it'll not only be glory here, but it'll also be glory when we get there. We see his bright light working here on earth, as well as the throne room in heaven. The problem today is soul winning's fading from our churches. We've got to get back to winning souls. The brightness of his position. Number two, the brightness of his presence. The brightness of his presence. Look at Mark 13, 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man, that's Jesus, coming in the clouds with great power and what? Glory. Now, folks, if you can't get excited about this kind of preaching, you're asleep or your wood's wet. Because he's coming back, folks. Every day that passes, his coming is quicker. He is not here now in the flesh, but he's in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which also lived in him while he was on this earth. The same power that was in Jesus is in you and me. Then why aren't we doing what Jesus did? We've got to get back to doing what Jesus did. 
Yet his, in his coming back in the rapture, he'll take us home to be with him in heaven. And our faith will become sight. And this old toil of life will be over. We'll see his glory on that day face to face. And I'm glad we get a little glimpse of it down here. Say amen. Seeing people come to know Christ. They'll see his glory. They who decided and denied his existence. They who denied his deity that he was the son of God. They who denied his salvation work that works. They who denied his personal compassion for man. At the second coming, they'll see the truth. But they'll see it too late. It's our job to let the glory of God shine through us and reflect off of us right now, living for him. At the second coming, they'll see clearly his great power and his great glory. His brightness will stun them and it will then slay him, slay them just by his words. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 19, there will be no way to deny him, debate him, or delay him, or defeat him then. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the what? The nations. Are you not with me, Ken? You don't have that? Ken's sleep. He's been sick all weekend. Y'all pray for him. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I'm here to tell you, God's word can either give life or it can bring death. And it's up to you. It's our choice whether we see the glory or the gory of God. Our choice. And the Bible's clear here at his second coming, those who've rejected him all throughout the tribulation, they're going to see the gory after they see the glory. But thank God we're going to be with his glory forever. That's the joy of us. The brightness of his position, the brightness of his presence, number three, the brightness of his presentation. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his what? His mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Boy, that's what I'm looking forward to. When I was a kid, my step-granddaddy and my daddy and my two uncles, who weren't but a year older than I was, we all went to the Lynchburg Armory. And that night, Wahoo McDaniel was wrestling Johnny Valentine. I didn't say Greg, he was a chip off the wrong block. I said Johnny Valentine. He had hit Wahoo McDaniels, and you'd just think the whole building was going to fall in. Then Wahoo would chop him, and you thought the other half of the building was going to fall in. People hollering and screaming. Everybody wanted Wahoo to win. Wahoo didn't win. Johnny Valentine cheated. He pulled Wahoo's trunks, and he whooped him right there. And the whole crowd liked to kill Johnny Valentine until he got back to the dressing room. Oh, I'm telling you what. Hmm. It was sad. Let me tell you something. That whole crowd got upset because Wahoo got whooped. Well, I won't tell you when the devil gets whooped, you're going to hear Walter holler. You're going to hear me shout. You're going to hear me glorify God because the devil is going to get whipped. Oh, the Bible's clear. His presence and glory will unmask the Antichrist and expose him as the phony representative of the liar he is. His presence will make the Antichrist uh, be evicted to the pits of hell for all of eternity, and Satan's going to the bottomless pit. Say amen. I believe the Antichrist will be part demon, part human, and his destiny will be the same as the fallen angels whose uh, men have uh, chose to follow and rejected Christ. It'll be their eternal home along with the demons. The Bible says in 
Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. God didn't prepare hell for man. He prepared hell for the devil and his angels. But if you choose to believe that liar over the truth of the Son of God, you're going to see who's got glory and who's glory. And that's the devil. The glory of his brightness will consume the father of all lies, Satan himself, and will evaporate his power and presence and place him in that bottomless pit for a thousand years. What a day, glorious day that will be. Evil cannot stand nor exist in Christ's holy presence. All the world will be uh, at the presentation of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as King of kings and Lord of lords. But after he's presented, the decision they made in their life will determine where they're going to go from there. Whether they'll go to hell for all of eternity or find glory in the Son of God. You know the wonderful thing is this morning, if you're here and you know not Christ is your Savior, you can make that choice today. This very hour. You don't have to wait. You can get it settled today. Get it taken care of. The brightness of his position. The brightness of his presence. The brightness of his presentation. But number four, the brightness of his punishment. Look at Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. And his brightness was as the what? The light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was a hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals and went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did what? Bow. His ways, underline this in your Bible, are everlasting. The brightness of his punishment it's not reversible. It's not changeable. The Lord's power has been hidden for a long time. But in that day of his second coming, we're not talking about the rapture. We're talking about the second coming to the earth before the millennium. To take his rightful place on his throne in Jerusalem. The whole world will see him. Every eye will behold him. Now, 50 years ago, that might not have been possible, but today it's possible. Every eye will see him. Every eye will behold him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They will see his glory. He will show his power. Romans chapter 14, verse 11. For it is written, as I, have, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to, to me, every tongue shall confess to God, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to who? You're going to stand before God, whether it's at the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. We're all going to stand before God. Now, I thank God, God I'm going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Because there's no hope at that great white throne judgment. The end of that, every result will be hell for all of eternity. Everyone. He will show his power before he shows himself during the tribulational period. He will already show that he was able to do the things he was said he was able to do. You would think men would pay attention and they would look up and say, oh, look what God's doing, but they don't. They still deny that God exists. They will still deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They will cling to the Antichrist and his regime. and They'll refuse to come to Christ. You know, I don't see much difference in that than what I see now. You preach the gospel, you share the gospel, and people still say, I don't believe it. it's just a fairy tale. It's just a book. It's all just religion, man-made. I got news for you. Salvation's God-made. It's not man-made. God made the plan of salvation. He used his own son to carry it through. He's using his Holy Spirit to carry it on. And everything the Bible has said thus far has come true. I'd be afraid to be caught left behind. I'd be afraid he will disarray and defeat the nations 
even before his presence is known. He will shake the world during the tribulation before his presence. He's trying to say, the worst is to come. Pay attention now. Come to me now before it's too late. That's what this preacher is telling you this morning. There's never been a t- I'm not talking about joining the church. Joining a church will not get you to heaven. I'm not talking about being baptized. If, 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 if getting in water would save folk, every frog in the world would go to heaven. You don't get saved by being baptized. You get baptized because you got saved. It's just a testimony. What saves you is a time when you realize that you're on your way to hell and that you need a Savior to forgive your sins. That's when you'll get saved. Say amen. Oh, listen. He'll restore the earth, but he will sentence mankind to hell for all eternity. His ways are everlasting. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His decisions are final. He, he's not ambivalent. He isn't double-tongued. He's always been God. And here in the book of Haggai, he's trying to tell Israel, everything was mine then, everything is mine now, and everything will be mine forever. Amen. It's the same message he's given us today. You had some crying because they wanted a more ornate temple. You had some crying because they didn't want to work at all. You had some crying because they wanted to build a temple and nobody wanted to help them. I'm here to tell you don't listen to those two far-sighted crowds. Listen to God and let's get the job done. Say amen. Because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look now at Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. He said it's mine. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. It's still his. I got a couple of rings on my finger. When I die... They ain't going with me. I guess them two kids will fight over them, and one of them will take one, one will take the other, and then when they die, their dogs will fight over it, I guess, because they ain't got no kids. So I guess the dogs will fight over it. It's God's. It's not mine. My house is not mine. My car's not mine. It's God's. Everything's his. The desire of many nations is silver and gold and wealth and power. It won't be theirs because it's his. Has been, will be, and is going to be. Nebuchadnezzar had stolen all the gold when he took Israel captive. It was all now gone. There was no gold to put on the temple walls. There was no silver. There were no jewels. But it was still the house of God. Because it was God's dwelling place. It's where you went to meet and worship the Lord. They never took that which Israel had that was much more precious than gold or silver. They didn't take the Lord of hosts, and they'll never take the Lord of hosts. The devil says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to rise above the clouds, and I'm going to sit above the throne of the highest. He's going to hell. He's not going to win. He's going to lose. These old timers here in the book of Haggai were remembering the physical. They had forgotten the real glory of the spiritual one, Jehovah God Almighty. And I'm afraid today we're doing the same thing. We're more worried about this and we're more worried about that when you ought to be worried about loving him. Let me tell you something. God showed me something this morning. I was laying in the bed and couldn't sleep. They say that's what happens when you get old. You can't sleep like you used to. Now, that ain't true for my daddy. He, work don't bother him. He can lay down side and go sleep. He sleeps more than any human I've met, but I, I can't sleep. So I got up and got to my desk and pulled up that little list y'all see me circling on over yonder. And I started praying. Every one of y'all were prayed for this morning, probably before you got out of bed. And I know I've seen at least seven prayers answered already this morning. I'm glad I got up. That's what's valuable to me. Valuable to me to see God hear and answer my prayers. And God take his word and use it in the lives of people. That's what makes me happy. That's what gives me joy. Because I want to see God take my life and make something out of it. And he's the only one who can do that. And then see, he said, peace in verse 9. The glory of his latter house shall be greater than the former and the Lord of hosts and in this place will I give peace 
saith the Lord of hosts, you don't find peace in God, you'll never find it. You never find it in money, friends, relationships, cars, houses, vacations, clothes, jewels. You're never going to find peace in that. God promises that the glory will be much more prevalent in the temple to come because he'll be there. And it'll be of him, not of the craftsmanship of man. They won't be saying, look at the beautiful walls, look at the beautiful gold, look at the beautiful silver. They'll be saying, look at the beautiful Savior. You know what we ought to be saying this morning here at Temple Baptist, Timberlake Baptist Church? Getting the temple and the Timberlake mixed up. Hey, we ought to be saying, isn't God good? Look what he done last Sunday, saved two last Sunday. I hope he'll save some more today. I hope God's people will get encouraged. That's what I live for. Oh, listen to me. This temple will never be disturbed by the greed of man. Jesus' temple will never be desecrated by man or the devil again. This temple will never be destroyed by man again for any reason. This temple will know the true destiny of everlasting peace. And the glory of the Prince of Peace will shine in that place forever. Oh, what peace. You know what peace is? When you look at the clock and it says it's 5 to 11, I still got another hour to preach. <laughs> Y'all don't have no peace at all now, do you? It's all gone. <laughs> don't get nervous. Don't get worried. When Jesus enters the temple in Jerusalem at the beginning of the millennium, he will accomplish something the League of Nations, the UN, and the Antichrist could never do. He'll bring lasting peace. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through who? Some of y'all are not happy here this morning. You don't see any joy in this life. It may be because you've never given your heart and soul to the one who can fill you with peace when everything else around you is falling apart. He's the Prince of Peace. The first time Jesus came to bring peace between God and man. The second time he, he comes, he'll bring peace to all the earth. The Jews who had returned home from the captivity were to look at this temple as the hope of the future eternal temple to come, to be inhabited in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ by Jesus himself, the Messiah. Today, in our everyday life, we should look at what we are going through in the light of the eternal scheme of things and just not the misery you feel now of the uncomfortableness of this life. God's purpose for you personally, and your part in the church corporately is ought to, ought to be in the forefront of your mind. All material treasures are his and not ours. We're stewards. We're not owners. It's just ours until we go home to be with him. We need to see things in the light of our future purpose for all that we're doing for him. It's not all about us. If the Lord tarries, it's about our children and our grandchildren. That's what it's about. I want to show you a picture. When I saw this picture, the first person I thought of was Larry Tickle. <laughs> Don't that look like Larry Tickle? That ain't Larry Tickle. That's Robert Moffat. There was a Scottish preacher who on the end of the year the month of December, turned in his resignation. One of the deacons asked, said, Pastor, why are you resigning? The Scottish pastor said, well, we've only had one convert this year. Only one. We, Bobby Moffat, this little boy, this young little fella, is all that's gotten saved this year in my pastorate. But you see, what this Scottish pastor didn't understand is Robert Moffat became one of the greatest missionaries ever known in the continent of Africa. Little is much when you look for the glory of God in it. 
God's got glory you don't know about yet. He spread light you haven't even seen yet. But you've got to decide you want that light to reflect off of your life. He discounted God's greatest work in his life. He just did not know. And I'm afraid today there's a lot of Christians who just don't know how important it is to trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. There's some people in this world who don't know that he's the son of God. And they're on their way to hell. I heard of a young man here recently who was killed in a car accident. Had big plans for his life. But his life was cut short by an animal running across the road. He swerved to miss the animal and lost his life. They taught my son in driver's education, cream the animal. But he didn't. His life was cut short. It was over. Folks, I want to tell you something. No man knows what a day may bring forth. You may not live to see that 70 mark that's promised. You may go earlier than you expect. You may go unexpectedly. To the Christian, when you go, did you do everything he had you to do? For the lost man, did you accept Christ or did you die without him? That's a dangerous mistake. That's an eternal mistake that can never, there's no such thing as purgatory. The Bible says a rich man, when he opened up his eyes, he was in hell in torments. The Bible said that Lazarus opened his eyes in heaven. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There's no soul sleep in the grave. That's silliness. The minute you leave here, you with God, if you're saved, say amen. amen. Oh, praise God. That's what the Bible says. Listen to me. We have to believe God's working in the shadows, taking care of his own. We have to believe that God's doing great things, even though we may not see them. And he is. Don't let the devil lie to you and discourage you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And if he's not in you yet, give me just five minutes and I'll tell you how you can find him. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. Maybe you're here this morning you say, Pastor, I want to see his light. Pastor, I want his light to reflect off my life. Pastor, I don't want to waste my life. I want to invest it in the ministry of God. God spoke to me this morning, preacher, and I, I got to stop looking around me. I got to start looking above me. And I got to look for his glory. Preacher, pray for me. I want to serve God in a greater capacity for my life. Slip your hand up and let God know you heard him. Come on. All over the room. All over the room. I want to do more with my life. I don't want to waste it. How many here this morning say, preacher, I've got some people I know need to be saved. And I want God to help me be a soul winner. And I want God to help me lead them to him. Pray for me to be a soul winner and pray for their souls to be saved. Slip your hand up. God knows who you're praying for. All over the room. All over the room. Thank you so much. Please, I beg you in Jesus' name, come pray for them this morning. Come pray for them this morning. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I don't know if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm concerned about my soul. I will not come to you. I will not embarrass you. I want to pray for you in general as we start this invitation. But I want to know that God spoke to you so I can pray for you. Is there one to raise your hand and say, Preacher, remember me. I am concerned about my soul. Yes, I see that hand. Is there another? I'm concerned about where I'm going to spend eternity. In heaven or in hell. Preacher, my heart's beating 100 miles an hour. That's God knocking on your heart's door. Let me pray for you this morning. Anybody else before we pray? Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I sure would like to know. Let's stand to our feet. Father, I pray as we give this invitation, I pray, Lord Jesus, that first of all, Christians would come. I pray they would come and gather around this altar 
And Lord, I ask you to be their love.